Hey, Foot Clan, I'm back today. No more Mike and Jason. They're gone. I fired them. <laughs> They're out of here. No, we go through the rest of the matchups, get you ready for the weekend. Do not miss this episode. Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome back. Welcome in. It's Andy time. I was talking to myself first. (laughs) Welcome into the show. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers. I, I, I'm trying to book in the week. When I was a kid, I always said weekend should be four days. Okay. And you should go to school for three days. I think that my children would approve that message. Um, but no, I'm, uh, I'm rejoining just before the weekend. I can handle one show before the weekend. I appreciate you guys holding things down for me. My daughter is doing... Perfectly fine now. She is well. She ah, is better. So, so she is much stronger than you. Much stronger. Mm. Well, I, I get into the Shout office. out to the asthmatics out there. <laughs> I get into the office today. Oh, no. I'm like, oh, Andy's car's here. It was There was rumors, whispers from the bushes that Mr. Holloway was going to make his triumphant return. <laughs> and I walk in. And it's a <laughs> Look, and it's man. Andy, and Andy's going buck wild on the nebulizer. <laughs> Just looking super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike, you can relate. Oh, you can you know I can. Puff, puff. <laughs> uh, I but no, I, it's, uh, it's been a long week. I'll say that. I uh, appreciate you guys holding everything down. And we're back. We've got more matchups on the show today. We've got an exciting weekend. We've got the, the game last night bringing us back to the early 50s mm-hmm. like once again. Whew. And uh, a whole lot to get into. I'm, I'm going to even share some my starts of the week real quick at the top here. But. Oh, that's great. I was just going to say that game at least was merciful because like, I'm usually putting my kids to bed at halftime, and yeah. this game was over. <laughs> it was didn't 19-9 like, didn't to 9 just feel like the right score? I mean, that just seems like yeah. that, that, this, this is the kind of matchup that Bill Callahan's like, ooh, a high-scoring affair. <laughs> right. So this was uh, Pat Thorman, great friend of the show. He tweeted out, Washington has run. 41 snaps in consecutive games. For context, the five offenses with the fewest plays run in each of the last five seasons averaged 57 snaps. They were at 41. Since 1970, only three teams have run 41 players or fewer twice in the same season. That's too many. Too many, says Bill. Wild Bill. I mean, look, yes. Mild Bill. <laughs> Adrian Peterson, look, he looked, he looked okay. 14 for 76, you know, running for 5.4 a carry. He's been over four a carry the past three games. That's impressive to me because everybody knows it's coming. It 100% is. But you know what it's not doing? Winning football games. Well, let's be honest. They weren't going to win them anyway. Yeah, they're trying to lose by less. And I think they're doing a good job. The Jay Gruden strategy or the Bill Callahan strategy, you weren't going to win. I even said about uh, Haskins. You know, people people are so excited and and, and about the McLaurin-Haskins collegiate connection. Well, Dwayne Haskins is not in college anymore. Yeah. And it shows because everyone that would be a McLaurin reception is an interception. Yeah, that McLaurin was wide open for a nice gain. Yeah. if you he, want he, Mc- was on, he was he on was track. balling yes. out in the beginning of that game with Case Keenum. I was like, oh, fantastic. Yeah, I we think g- it was like four for thirty nine or something in the first in the first half. I mean It is not a question as to whether Terry McLaurin's good. He's great. Yeah. He's a great separator. He was consistently open. B if you're a McLaurin owner, just be saying your prayers for Case Keenum. You need him back. They it's have the said that he will be the starter if he's healthy. So at least which is great. We haven't we haven't got the proclamation yet that okay it's it's Haskins time. Which many many teams at this point of the season where the, the season's gone, they would say okay, let's see what the rookie can do. I think the problem is they've seen what the rookie can do <laughs> in practice. That's the only fear I have. Yeah, with Cortland Sutton, I love love like you Emmanuel Sanders leaves. Cortland Sutton's been a baller. The only fear in the back of your mind with Cortland Sutton, or for those of you who want to go acquire him real quick before the end of the season for the big run without Emmanuel Sanders, is what happens if Flacco plays two more games. 
If Flacco's there, Cortland Sutton's going to be a, a... You're saying, and, and then they go to like Drew Locke? Yeah, they go somewhere else. And then the all that consistency, the strategy, the even in, uh, in Washington, it hurts. 41 plays a game. Even with Case Keenum, it hurts. McLaurin not having more opportunity. Yeah, it's funny. You can make fun of Joe Flacco and Case Keenum, which we do. It's easy. <laughs> but the problem is when you compare them to a mid-level, basically to a non-exceptional rookie quarterback, they are so much better than that. And, it, we, you know, when the first change was made in case, you know, was uh, when they went to Haskins the first time, right. I remember saying, look, this is bad for Terry McLaurin. You just look at rookies' yardage and touchdown totals at the quarterback position. They don't support quality wide receivers. So just for, for Flacco right now, I mean, he's got Brandon Allen behind him. Drew Locke, it, all the news on him because they put him on the IR at the beginning of the season. I don't know when he's going to come back. So I think Flacco is actually a little – he's safe right now. Things can change quick when you watch Joe Flacco with your eyeballs. That's all I'm going to say. If the sure. team has to watch him for a couple weeks, different things can change quickly. I know that Elway's come out and talked about Drew Locke. He says he's not ready yet, and he means it developmentally, not just physically. Right. He's just not ready yet. So that it, there's a lot of hope there. I'm not saying throw Sutton away. It's just got to be the fear in the back of your mind that your your F1 can be thrown into neutral. And then back to the, the game that happened last night real quick. Kirk Cousins was freaking awesome. Like he was sensational, twenty three for twenty six, and I think his incompletions were two throwaways and, and a, drop. a drop. I mean, he was essentially perfect. Fantasy owners don't care. I know that's that's a crappy part of oh, Jason's flexing. Yeah, like, here's the yeah, problem. You, you yes. guys made a top twelve bet, right? We, we did. did. We did. And here's here's the problem. Cousins, you would agree, Jason was an excellent quarterback yesterday. Oh, absolutely. He was. He was two hundred and eighty five uh, yards. But for fantasy, nothing. Because right. the almighty touchdown is so incredibly valuable that hey. he will now be like QB 17 on the week, even have, though he was awesome. Have hope. As of right now, he is the quarterback one on the week. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. It can, is we put, can, we, can we end the bet right there? It is Friday. Put Clan Friday. All right, today's winner of a $55 oh. gift card to shopballers.com is a Foot Clan member, Mayo Lover. That's their name. Mayo. Uh, oh, I was waiting Mayo for... Lover. Not just a Mayo Lover, which many of us are, but Mayo Lover. <laughs> okay. So congratulations. Mayo. Mayo Lover. All yeah, I, was hearing, I, I heard the same thing was, you were hearing, Mike. I, I was it, hearing Mayo. Yes. And then no. I was like, what, like the post office? I, had, I was trying to find the spelling because I was like, <laughs> I love getting a fresh envelope and going to town because many of us are male lovers. <laughs> male versus mayo, though. Yes. Wh saying. Which direction do you go there? I'll go with mayonnaise. Oh, I love mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Yes. They, I just picked up, I finally did it. I picked up that combo, th the mayo chup. The mayo chup? Oh, like mayonnaise ketchup combo? Yeah, they released that into stores. I mean, that's pretty much thousand island without no, relish no it's different it's, it's di you need it's to, very close. you really need to check it out oh i i'm sure it was delightful all right um before we get into the rest of the matchups uh, i want to invite you to follow us on twitter at the ff ballers instagram.com slash fantasy footballers we're on youtube you know where to find us and then i want to throw these out there because i heard i mean you spoke for me yesterday at wide receiver. Which was perhaps out of turn, but you were not here to stop it, no, so no. it happened. But I'm, I'm here today, and I, I I feel like I need to throw my starts of the week out there briefly, quickly here. And they'll, they'll all be in the uh, I'm not dead yet theme, mm. because I am physically not dead yet. I'm back. And so my quarterback start of the week, Matthew Stafford, love this it. week. I actually have him at number two yeah, on the week. Love it. Against uh, New York, 330-plus point games, driving it downfield. You guys know. And then this one is going to be a little bit different. This one's a hot take. It is. And look, it, it'd be very easy and obvious. Everybody's starting Austin Eckler. If you have Austin Eckler, you're starting him. So I'm not going to make him my start of the week. It seems stupid. But a lot of people want to know whether you can start Melvin Gordon against Chicago. And most people think you can't. And I think that you can. I don't think Melvin Gordon is dead. The wheels have fallen off for Chicago's run defense. There's potentially no or a limited Keenan Allen in this game. The last three games, the Bears' run defense has given up six touchdowns. 
They've been absolutely decimated. If you read anything about what's going on in Chicago, the linebacking core is just a disaster. Roquan Smith finally came back, played terribly, was indicted. They're moving people around. They can't stop the run right now. They're giving up tons and tons and tons of yards. So Let me ask you this. I just want to say you can start Melvin Gordon. When the wheels have fallen off of the rush defense, which I agree with that, what happens when a car where the wheels fell off is put up against another car where it looks like the wheels are also not attached, being Melvin Gordon. I think they never collide. They, I think they, that's what happens, right? But that's good for a running back. You don't want him to collide. They never hit each other. But he can't collide because he can't move. Sure. The The nice thing is Russell Okung, uh, the the left tackle. Yeah, he should be back. He should be back, and that's that's huge because I think a big part of Melvin Gordon's problem, and, and you know, the, the they lost their guard, they lost their center, those are major problems. At least they're getting their left tackle back. I just want to put a little bit of a confidence play out there with Melvin Gordon. Well, my team and, appreciates it. And, and you guys it. talked about it yesterday. This The passing defense in Chicago has been stout. But the last three weeks, they've lost it on the ground, whether it was to Jacobs or Latavius Murray. It's been ugly. Yeah. And then uh, you guys threw out my wide receiver start of the week we already. Did. <laughs> yeah! So we'll go Kenny Stills at wide receiver. And Kenny then, Bills. Also, I we need to apologize to the Foot Clan. I did see our start-sit tool mm, yes. was apparently broken because it couldn't find Kenny Bills. Mm. Yeah. If you search Kenny Bills. It was Kenny broken Bills, because of that? Well, he, like, it, the system rejected Kenny Bills, which is that's really... On, that's on us. Yeah. We're not going to change that, but <laughs> that's still on us. And then uh, I think you can take a shot. Tight end starts of the week right now. It might as well be a streamer. You guys know you're starting the big players right now, but you're looking for, hey, can I start a Josh Hill? I'm gonna. I think Ben Watson is somebody that you could you could throw out there this week. He played on 62 of 82 snaps last week, five targets. Always a possibility for him to to bring in a touchdown in this matchup. You know, it doesn't look like Chris Herndon's going to be back this week as an option. Jared Cook is out again. There's a lot of struggling tight end start situations if you don't have one of the big guys. And so I'm actually, look, Ben Watson's going to be my play over uh, Chris Herndon, who's going to probably sit again. So I'll throw that out there quickly as a, another player I have more confidence in than, in than some others. But it is Friday. You guys want to do some in and out? Mm -hmm. What's it going to be, McFly? <laughs> Are you in or out? Um, there was one tiny bit of news first, just the Robbie Anderson trade rumors. Do you buy into the fact that Robbie Anderson's being shopped, going to be a free agent, could go someplace else. I buy it. There's There's been whispers this entire season of Robbie Anderson being traded away. They just have increased in volume over the past couple of days. They he's He is up for a contract. Like he's going to be looking for a big payday, and the Jets don't seem like they want to offer it to him. So trading him away right now would be... Be the move for New York. Get it, some value while you can. And if you have a burnable roster spot, if you're like, eh, my last guy, like, I, uh, you know, it's garbage. DT? Yeah, Demarius Thomas is a guy you might want to pick up prior to a possible trade because if Robbie was traded, everyone would be rushing to the waiver wire to grab Demarius Thomas with the upcoming schedule and the targets that would open up for him. All right, in or out. Let's go through the injuries, what you guys are expecting. Matt Ryan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I'm think gonna, he'll play. I, I'm going to say in based on Dan Quinn saying in. What about Drew Brees? I know you guys have talked a lot yeah. about it this week. Brees says he's expecting to play. I'm still going to say out. I th I think he's going to be out. Just not worth the risk. It's certainly not worth the risk, but Drew Brees is – look, players want to play, man. Alvin Kamara. Limited again on Thursday. I think – I believe he will play this he week, though. He they released play. Zenner. Steve Geller, the uh, sideline reporter, said that he was back at practice. No wrap, brace, tape, sleeve. Uh, oh, none of those. Yeah. Mm. He's, so I think he's in. What about clothes? Oh, goodness. I It doesn't say, so I can't confirm Take, or deny. Taking it back to ancient, right. the ancient Olympic times. They were going. They were taking shirts and skins real serious. <laughs> They're like, oh, yikes. <laughs> your skins today. <laughs> oh, man. Yikes. <laughs> David Johnson. Oh, gosh. It's now just coming out that he will be a game-time decision. <gasps> they will not. D David Johnson is out, and he's out of my lineup even if he plays. Well, that I think that's the important piece there, right? Like whether or not he's active, you can't try it this week. If you're facing 
Chase Edmonds versus DJ. They're both active. You're playing Edmonds. Yes, yes. 100%. Fool me once. Yeah. Josh Jacobs. Uh, he can play with the, the special football juice. <laughs> so you think he will? Because he didn't practice all week. Yeah, yeah he, he can't really practice because his, he needs the special football juice. Right, his shoulder has, a, has, a, has a, what we assume is a sprained AC joint. He needs the shot. They're not going to give him a shot for practice, but they'll give him a shot for the game, and he'll get out there. No cursory uh, DeAndre Washington ads? I think he's interesting uh, that he should be on your bench. All right, Malcolm Brown's been ruled out. Rex Burkhead, unlikely to play. Jalen Samuels had a surprise full practice on Thursday. If he's sitting out on waiver wires, are you yeah, mm, I mean, scooping? I, may, yeah. I'm, I'm, he's Not worth to it. play, but I mean just Yeah, I, I don't think he plays this week, but it's possible that he's back next week now, which will be a – this will be a – beating the timeline but he's worth an ad the same way that benny snell was worth the ad uh for what it's worth um dr david chow didn't he wasn't very surprised at the time oh, he wasn't no he wasn't well i'm not a doctor and i'm surprised there you go <laughs> Devonte adams it's getting better for Devonte adams things he are said optimistic. two million times better two million times better but it, i still don't believe he plays this week i think he gets how back many more millions next. do we need we Devontae? Need, yeah just two more next week two <laughs> more million um it'll be a full game time decision unfortunately it's sunday night football so you've got to be prepared with either uh you know another guy in the sunday night or monday night game which would be more than likely it's one of the Miami Dolphin wide receivers, like Devontae Parker or Preston Williams. Yep. There's a lot of wideouts on the fence this week. Let's run through them. MBS, in or out? In. in. Keenan? I'm going to say out. He popped up on Thursday as a did not participate from a hamstring issue. Uh, that's that's tough. Yeah. We're, if he's limited today, though, he'll be in. A.J. Green's not going to be out there. Correct. Um, Julian Edelman he'll, should be well, out he there. He always plays. Will we see Emmanuel Sanders make his 49er debut? Yep. Yes. Tyrell, Tyrell Williams. Yeah, I think he's good to go. He's been practicing. They're expecting him to play this week. Sterling Shepard. Out. Okay. Sammy Watkins. In. in. He's been practicing in full. Uh, I was kind of curious. I heard you guys say that you would start Watkins. No, you heard Mike say I that. was saying I'm going to okay. start Watkins. Even with Matt, with Matt Moore, you would start Watkins. Yeah, I think Matt Moore is a, is a very competent guy, and it's Andy Reid can get a game or two out of his backup, and it's – it's not that like I'm starting Sammy Watkins. I'm, I've got a top twenty guy this week. It's okay. I I, I kind of have to start Sammy Watkins, but I also believe that he can succeed even with the circumstances. Yeah, that surprised me a little bit. I think I'm I think I'm more scared than you, Mike. But sure, but our, lizards are scary. They they are. But it's like okay, do you go with the lizard king or do I go to the waiver wire and pick up one of the? Would you, well, Preston Williams. Would you play Preston Williams over? No. Against, Sammy Watkins against Pittsburgh. Probably not. Yeah, I'm not interested in that. Christian Kirk? Uh, listening to uh, Arizona insider Kent Summers this morning, he was asked the same question. He thinks he's going to play this nice. week. It's getting closer, um, and he's and I, he knows Christian Kirk's really wanting to get out there. All right, George Kittle, limited on Thursday. He He'll should play. play. Jared Cook? I'm going to say out. O.J. Howard? That one was weird. It's similar to uh, uh, Keenan Allen. Thursday, like he's going to be out. Just didn't practice. I think O.J. Howard is out. Okay. Uh, Delaney Walker out. Jimmy Graham, he'll play. Chris Herndon, I say out. All right. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss out on the big time news. Don't miss out. NFL trade deadline is next Tuesday. Yes. I bet we see some splashes. Oh yeah. We. I mean, we've already seen a few. The NFL's. If if you've been following football for a while, you know that. Trades that are that have happened in the recent years, they didn't used to happen. Like I remember back when Brandon Marshall actually got traded. It was like, Whoa. It, it was, holy crap, a big-name player got traded? So hopefully we'll see some splashes just because it's, it's fun. Yeah, we play fantasy. They should play fantasy. Exactly. Hey, before we move into the rest of the matchups, want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. On average, a burglary happens once every 23 seconds in the U.S. And while the word burgle is fun to it's say, a fun. Yeah. it's not a fun thing to experience. But only one in five homes have home security, probably because most companies don't make it easy. It's a hassle. You got these contracts and they are got their smooth talking salespeople. Not simply safe. There's no contract, no hidden fees, no fine print. They're going to protect every door, window, and room with 24-7 professional monitoring for just $15 a month. 
Simply Safe has won a ton of awards from CNET to the New York Times wire cutter. When other home securities are triggered, police often assume it's a false alarm, and the call goes to the bottom of the list, not with Simply Safe. Using their video verification technology, they can visually confirm that a break in is happening, allowing police to get to the scene three and a half times faster. Keep your house safe from getting burgled. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. You'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. You've got nothing to lose. Go now. Be sure you go to simplysafe.com slash footballers so they know our show sent you. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. All right. Yesterday, my two best friends. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Covered the Seahawks and Falcons, Cardinals, Saints, Chargers, Bears, Jets, Jags, Giants, Lions, and the Buccaneers, Titans. So if you want to hear the matchup breakdowns, swing on over to yesterday's show. There'll be a giant cardboard bear there to help you as well. <laughs> All right, the rest of the matchups. Let's start with this Eagles-Bills game. The Eagles at 3-4 and four take on the 5-1 and one Bills. Bills at home. Bills one-and-a-half point favorites. I think the way I describe this Buffalo Bills team this year is they just find a way. They just find they a do. way to get it done, right? It's Here's, never been – Josh Allen hasn't gone out there and thrown up the 40-point game. Not yet. I believe that those are coming. But my favorite stat nugget here we have about this matchup, Josh Allen, he leads all quarterbacks in fourth quarter, comebacks three, and game-winning drives. Like that's He's got that clutch gene. Great, bringing his team back. Putting Greg Jennings put the team on his back. But then you look at the Bills have allowed 13.2 points per game to opposing quarterbacks at home. <laughs> like they're shutting down the opposing quarterback. Shouldn't need to come back. And they still have to come back. There's a reason they have to come back, and it's not the defense's fault. But we do expect the Bills to get it going with some of this schedule and Devin Singletary coming back and some. Yeah. Uh, there, there have been rumors about the Bills picking up. A wide receiver to get a little help. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, those, really. Those what are some of, some rumors out there right now? What what need do they have? Because John Brown is playing. They need somebody fantastic. else. I think on the outside. I think they okay. need another. Yeah, outside. they could use two. A guys. bigger a bigger bodied guy. I mean, Beasley. Yes, he gets done underneath, and mm. Brown is a deep threat. But neither of those guys are real. If you had a Robbie Anderson and you had Robbie Anderson on one side and John Brown on the other, that's hard to guard. I was going to um, say like Josh in, Gordon. In the yeah, they need a big sure. boy. Gordon's in the meantime. Uh, jo John Brown is a great play. The yes. Eagles are dead last in fantasy points given up to wide receivers, averaging 38.4 a game, and they are beaten over the top constantly. That's where John Brown, with the big arm from Josh Allen, that's that's why Josh Allen's my my start of the week this week. Um, you know, that it's just a it's finally a really good matchup for the passing attack for the Bills. Carson Wentz on the other side. This seems like a really, really difficult one for Wentz. He's not going to have Deshaun Jackson yet again. You just mentioned the Bills don't give up fantasy points when they're at home, and this is a big matchup. I, it's going to be tough sledding for Carson Wentz. Yeah, if you have a decent pivot at the quarterback position, I'm willing to sit Carson Wentz down for this one. Yeah, he's my quarterback 15 right now, Oof. which says I'm looking elsewhere. Obviously, I'd prefer Josh Allen, but some guys that – you know, Jacoby Brissett is someone that I would play over Carson Wentz this right. week. Um, the Eagles, the one area on the defense that they've been very successful against is fantasy points given up to the running back. I don't expect Frank Gore to have a lot of success uh, going up the middle in this game against Philadelphia. Does this mean that – what do you think about Devin Singletary? Will he be more involved this week? He only had seven touches. Are you staying away from the running game in Buffalo this week entirely? That's how I feel. I feel like this, is, this isn't this is the matchup where you expect the uh, game script to be heavily in favor of continuing to be able to run the ball. The matchup doesn't dictate that they should be able to run the ball. Now, Devin Singletary could get it done with some dump-off passes. That's so, what he needs. Right, and, and he certainly has the ability, but because of the low volume, the low touch totals, I would prefer to stay away from from Singletary as well as Frank Gore in this. It matchup. feels like a mirror on the other side. Miles Sanders needs those dump offs yeah. to give you a game, and Jordan Howard. It's going to be tough sledding against the Bills' defense, which is, you know, eleventh in the league against the run in terms of fantasy points given up. 
you know, spreading, it's just going to be tough. Yeah, I mean, if I had to pick one of those two guys on that side of the ball, I would go with Jordan Howard. Um, even though, you know, in this matchup, the Bills are so locked down in the passing game. You just, it's so hard to pass against the Bills. But they can be beat on the ground, and that's where, uh, you know, I, I think your game plan has to be try to try to smash them with Jordan Howard. For what it's worth, over the last month, he's the RB14. Jordan Howard just kind of getting it done. Nine, ten zone rush attempts. So, yeah, I, I agree I agree with you. Alshon Jeffrey, an ugly it's, it's flex ugly, play. It's ugly, yeah, but he, he's still startable as a three. And then uh, Zach, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard on the road here. The Bills are number two in the NFL in terms of not giving up points to the tight end position. You're not really sitting Zach Ertz. No, but can't. it was Goddard last week that had the good game. Yeah, you got to play Zach Ertz, but this isn't a good matchup for him. Really, there's no one on the Eagles side of the ball that you want to play. You have to play Zach Ertz, maybe play uh, Jordan Howard, and, and that's it. And what do you think? The Bills have that the strings. So like, here's who they've played the Jets, the Giants, Bengals, Patriots, Tennessee, and Miami. So the the tight end numbers can be skewed when you have a bunch of matchups against teams that don't even use their tight I end. I would agree with you, except for last year, they were number one at fantasy points given up against tight end, <clears throat> averaging only 6.2 points per game. So you've got a long enough sample to say it's not it's not great. Who do you think wins match. this game? I think the Bills Buffalo. win. Buffalo. Oh, yeah! Andy's almost upset of the week. Got that green fever, man. You can't quit it. They need it. Yeah, that they do. So does Buffalo. <laughs> they have to try and keep pace with the Patriots. No doubt about it. Bronco, wait, try to keep pace with the Patriots. How cute, they're, Mike. They're only a half game Aww, back. Right? Is that what they're thinking in Buffalo? They're five and one, man. Oh, that's cute. That is. Yeah. That is, isn't it? It's adorable. Oh my god. It's like really, really sweet. Oh, I love. Five by the and way, one. Even though I pick in the Eagles in this one, I love buffalo and i want to see yep. them succeed but come on come on mike the broncos two and five take on the colts four and two would you put the colts in your top five most impressive teams this year well easily when you look when a hall of fame quarterback or in my opinion oh he, he, he would have been a hall of would have been there sure. no doubt right before the season starts says you know guys i've I've changed my mind. I'm not doing this anymore. And you go, wait, what? It's so crappy of him. I still think uh, because of the time. Do it in the off season. Give the time, the team well, time to prepare. Don't you think it was the not recovering? That, yeah, that's what piled up. It's kind of hard. Mm. Yeah, it, regardless, anyway, uh, un decision, unlucky, unlucky. D discussion for, the for another time. But yes, to go to your backup quarterback and be a four and two. Beating teams a handful of different ways. This is not just they've said, okay, Marlon Mack, take us there. It's all on you. It's no, Jacoby Brissett's gotten it done. The defense getting it done. Marlon Mack's getting it done. So, the, yes, they have been extremely impressive to me for, for what they've been able to do. All right. This, uh, this game, the Colts are five and a half point home favorites, 43 point over under. Jacoby Brissett, over the last month, averaging the fifth most quarterback fantasy points. A 6.8% touchdown rate. That is – that's Russell Wilson number. That's that's a Patrick Mahomes type of number. Can he keep that going? I lean on the side that regression will hit him. He'll return kind of to just – he's he's good. One of the reasons – But he is succeeding outrageously. It, yes, those numbers are, are outrageously high, not only for the NFL average, but I believe for Jacoby Brissett's talent level. And, and that's not saying he's a bad quarterback. I mean – but you've got to be a Pat Mahomes to be there. But one of the reasons why I think that touchdown rate could stay is because of how it's come about. They, he doesn't throw the ball that much. So the, the, the touchdown rate goes up when you are establishing Marlon Mack and this great running game with that awesome offensive line. And now the teams are selling out. You get near the goal line and you've got a great offensive schemer in Frank Reich who gets these tight ends Opening. I think you're, you're taking the words out of my mouth, Jay. I agree completely. Yeah. He's an ex he's executing the game plan. Exactly. And Frank Wright is just su such a great coach. The one thing I'll say, the the knock against Frank Reich, is he has the largest man 
who has ever walked the face of the earth on his team. Gigantor. Gigantor, Mo Ali Cox, and he is not not unleashing him. Yeah, you know, I it's thought, really disappointing. I thought he was a good coach. I was wrong. <laughs> Because he's not using the because giant. Because he's not yes. using Gigantor, our favorite. Well, hey, look, he's a clearly big, you can see he's this a hand. really, really big guy. <laughs> he's huge. You can he's, only use him every he's so eight often. Foot two, three hundred and seventy-five. Right. Moerly Cox. All right, I know you love Marlon Mack this week, Jason. Yeah. He's my start of the week. He's had at least twenty touches in four of six games. He's on pace for three hundred and seventeen touches, and where he explodes historically, is in games where they win by a wide margin. I know this is only a five-and-a-half-point Vegas line, but I think the Colts completely own this game. This could be a game that I think uh, they win by two touchdowns, and Marlon Mack's going to be a big reason why. All right, and then Lindsey and Freeman, what do you do on the other side? Colts allowing 2.47 yards before contact. Yeah, the, the timeshare continues. Royce Freeman was the one who got the touchdown last week. I think you can play them both. I prefer. I still prefer Phil Lindsay. It's likely what we're going to say every single week. But Royce Freeman, to me, is getting enough touches. He's averaging four or more targets a game. He's interesting as a flex running back. Well, I assume you're not allowed to smirk or anything when you put them in your lineup. You have to keep no, kind of like no, a straight you must, face. No, no, you must be deadly serious <laughs> when you're playing Broncos players of any sort. You must be <laughs> deadly serious. Here's something that's interesting that's happened, though, over the last two games. Um, you've had a flip of the snap percentages. Royce Freeman, the last two games, has gone up to 62 and 63% of snaps, uh -oh. while Philip Lindsay has gone to 47 and 40% of snaps. So while Philip Lindsay is the more explosive player, and I agree for fantasy, I would still prefer him, it's something you need to pay attention to this trend uh, because – I think Royce is starting to get more volume, and, and that's what he needs. He's that type of player. I think Royce is not the guy that thrives in a you know a just complete 50-50 timeshare. It's interesting. It's definitely interesting. And that their defense had started to kind of figure things out a little bit too, which you, know, you wonder how that affects game script. Cortland Sutton, you're starting him. Yep. T.Y. Hilton, you're he, starting might, him. he might get some Chris Harris, but you're not benching – T.Y. Hilton? No, he, he moves around too much. He goes in and out of the slot. T.Y. Hilton will be okay. Um, do you have any interest in Deshaun Hamilton, the experience without Emmanuel Sanders? I have interest in putting him on my bench and waiting to see what happens. Last year, weeks 14 through 17, he was averaging nearly 10 targets a game. Different quarterback, so it, you have to take that with a grain of salt. But he was a, he was a PPR guy towards the end of the year he's an excellent receiver an excellent route runner I'm very excited for Hamilton's future I don't know mm -hmm. if this is the year like it, next in this offseason Hamilton will be one of the one of my favorite later round guys I'm okay. afraid we're gonna do that every year uh yeah we, what? we, we could for Hamilton this is, this, you know this is year two uh, I I think he's he's got the opportunity to we, step up and he's a good he's a good player we were only talking about Hamilton because Emmanuel Sanders was coming off of an injury that young players don't recover from. That's why we were interested in Hamilton. So it will be a different circumstance knowing that he is, in fact, the two. I'm going to call my shot here, fellas. Okay. This week is a Noah fantastic week. Oh! I think this is going to be the first week where we see a very good game from Noah Fant. He is in that consideration from streaming. The last couple of weeks, he's had a lot of things lined up for him, and he's failed on the field. Like the ball hitting him in the like hands. Like the ball hitting him in the lined hands. Up. That's like really good <laughs> if you're you know supposed to catch the ball. And it hasn't happened. But with Emmanuel Sanders gone, I think the, you know the, those targets will go – You know they'll spread around. They're not all going to Deshaun Hamilton evenly. Sure. And this is a matchup where yeah, tight end. the Colts yeah. are beat at tight end. They're 27th against tight end. Last year, they were 30th. So this is kind of how they scheme their defense – I think Noah Fantastic, uh, Noah Fant, I think he has his first good game of the year this season. I think that could definitely happen. I mean, you want you kind of look glance at Deshaun to just step in for Sanders, but Fant's been out there every week too, mm -hmm. building a rapport. It's a good 85. point. 85.5 percent of snaps last week for Noah Fant. Yeah, that's great. Bengals, they're having a season. Oh, and seven, taking on the Rams. And Ra shout out to the NFL. This is a London game. And it's not starting at 6.30 in the freaking morning on the West Coast. Mike's happy about that. Thank you, NFL, for blessing us with it. Look, they're getting their game. Everyone over there. Are they, though? 
<laughs> They're getting two <laughs> teams that are going to play a football game. <laughs> Rams are 13-point favorites in a 48.5 point over-under. I have a hard time believing the Bengals are going to get off the schneid in this one. Jared Goff is Mike's start of the week again. Yes. Man. And then at the running back position. Yes. Gurley's out there. Are you willing to flex Daryl Henderson? I'm willing to do it because the Bengals are 32nd against running backs. That's and bad. That's a low number. It is. Let me check the computer. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. <laughs> it's the lowest you can go. And, and Todd Gurley is not going to get everything for this team. So even though it'll be a, a lower touch amount for Henderson, I think he can succeed. Yeah, I would. I would. Ha I would still have a hard time putting him in, but it, certainly you could you could rip something off and and have success. But I would rather have someone that I am more assured of the touches. I I hate you know you know what sucks. Joe Mixon. I oh, feel like they should woof. not say that London games are home games. It's not fair. Oh yeah. Because when you look at the schedule weeks in advance, you know I'm looking at. Okay, you know you you've got the great schedule against Atlanta, and then he's home against Cincinnati, and you're like for Jared Goff. It's like, well, this, he's not, it's home. not a home game. He's in London town. Well, what about when teams have guys like Sir Arthur Francis? Mm -hmm. That's probably a home game for that guy. Well, sure. I just, he's on waivers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to do with Joe Mixon. You, I mean, him. You, you look at these games. Daryl Henderson he, or Joe Mixon, Jason? That's, Joe, a re, that's a real question. That is a real that question. Should, that should be a real one. At, at that point, I would go Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon has more, go, I think I'd go more of these absolutely astronomically low. I mean, you did see 10 carries two yards last week. Eight for 10 the week before. Impressive. Six for 10 against Seattle. 11 for 17 against he, San Francisco. He has four games where he has been held to 1.67 yards per attempt or fewer. Oh, my God. Four games. It's really, really. Stop. Look, stop. Punching yourself in the face now, and playing Joe Mixon. Now, yes, I completely agree. So when we say, okay, Joe Mixon or Daryl Henderson, and I've got to say Joe Mixon, I want to bench Joe Mixon. I am benching okay. Joe Mixon. I think you can do better than either of those players. I think – opportunity or Mixon? My opportunity, 100 out of 100. Uh, David Montgomery, for sure, over Joe Mixon. That's Royce not Freeman. Or Royce Freeman. Exactly. If you've got a guy who's going to touch the ball – Frank Gore, bad matchup. I, would, I think I would rather have Frank Gore than Joe Mixon. That, Jordan Howard against Jordan the Buffalo. Jordan Howard. Okay. You Joe know, Mixon is a guy I want to bench until things get right, and things might just not get right. Let, let me ask you this. Do you miss Marvin Lewis? Oh, 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 oh. That's no. That's a real question. He's no, getting head coaching attention right now. No. No, he's not. Absolutely. Because of the success Arizona State's having with him on coaching staff. Oh, gosh. And the Bengals, Don't do the it. Bengals have yet to win a game without him. Yes, that is very accurate. It's just, it's just Look com at their comical. Players, man. this is yes. not his fault. This isn't Zach Taylor's fault. Well, the, Marvin the, Lewis didn't have any players. Marvin he, Lewis had AJ Green. He had an he offensive, had an offensive line. line. Yeah, not last year. <laughs> yeah, I, it's just it's really ugly right now. Woof. That's got to feel real, real bad as a new head coach too. Just yes. kind of like every week, you got to get more and more, more and more tense. As it goes on. All right, Tyler Boyd, where are you with him? A lot of people asking, like, rest of season, Tyler Boyd, are you scared? I mean, he, he's getting targeted. He's had a couple of rough weeks in a row, but the targets are there, but these are Dalton targets. Yeah, not only are these Dalton targets, I mean, 14 targets for five receptions, yuck. But now you've got Jalen Ramsey. This is, you know, if, if, if he ends up half of the game on Tyler Boyd, I assume you're going to have another bunch of targets that don't matter. He's a guy that... I'm I'm certainly not excited to start. He's had two big games this year, and outside of that, you've been disappointed with almost every week. Uh, Robert Woods, Cup, Cooks, they're all in your lineup. Yep, I'm going to play them all still. Not chasing no Alex Erickson points from last week? No, yeah. I'd, I'll go with Auden Tate, though. I think he's an okay flex play. And you still giving the, the wink to Gerald Everett this yeah, week, Mike? I was just going to say Mount Everett. Gerald Everett, he's been getting it done the last three weeks. 22, 20, 26 percent target share. He is getting more and more involved. I know that Jason refuses to buy in that this is happening, but he is. He's I'm coming a, around. He's a tight end one until he's not. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I, I am coming around. You know, in my rankings right now, I do have him as my tight end eight this week. 
So you can't say I hate him too much. <laughs> okay. Everett or Watson? Oh, I would go Gerald Everett yeah. there. Yeah. Everett, yeah, obviously. All right, Panthers four and two. 49ers still undefeated. 49ers five and a half point favorites at home in this one. I think it's a little higher than I'd expect. It's a 42 point mm. over under. It's a little lower than I would expect. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, maybe it's right where it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> They've set a good line where people will bet both sides. Yeah, seriously. Uh, well, the Panthers have been so impressive under Kyle Allen and with Christian McCaffrey coming out of the bye. I, you know, last week the 49ers got it done, but just barely in the in the sloppy, wet uh, Washington game. So Jimmy Garoppolo getting it done, but for fantasy purposes, probably not playing him this week. No, and you're hoping that the addition of Emmanuel Sanders giving him a an actual top tier type of wide receiver to go to it, it should help Garoppolo. I mean, think back; it was a while ago. It was a missed season ago when he earned his money. When he earned his big contract, he was throwing on a pace for five thousand yards in a season, and it was over the course. And it was only five games, but he was balling out. He was a three hundred yard machine. So it's not that he can't do it, but with this defense and the running game going the way it is, will they ever put it on the shoulders of Jimmy Garoppolo? That's They want to. They've added Emmanuel Sanders, so but I'm not going to play him until I see it happen. I think they want to. I don't think they want to. I think they want to be able to. So Sanders should okay, help fair. him. Do that. But they, they run more than anybody in football. Number one run play percentage. And... This week, you know, Tevin Coleman, you're going to play him. Are you playing Matt Breida after last week? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't – some people are making a lot of, oh, you know, no more touches after he got cleared to come. I mean, that game was a mess, and he got poked in the eye and concussed. And Yes, and I'm, I'm not worried about Matt Breida. All right. Um, this Christian McCaffrey fellow, you going to th start him? Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you back, buddy. <laughs> By the way, do you think Emmanuel Sanders negatively affects George Kittle's target uh, market share at all? He could, for sure, because they haven't had another wide receiver that's been separating, getting open. They now have someone that will for sure do that. Um, this matchup, it's not, you know, it, the the Panthers haven't really faced any great was, tight ends. They're, they're top 10 against tight end and top 10 against quarterback. So say, okay, if the number one option here is Kittle, that's, that's not good. But then you look at their schedule, and assuming you are not saying O.J. Howard is like, a difficult matchup because right. they have played Tampa Bay twice. Um, you know, I, I think George Kittle is fine here, and I'm not spooked by the current season rankings of the Panthers as a top 10 tight end defense. I was going to point out for when I was referring to the line, and it, yeah, Kyle Allen said success. He's winning. He's an undefeated quarterback, but he's played Arizona, Houston, Jacksonville, and Tampa. Like, he hasn't faced a defense anywhere close to the level that San Francisco is playing right now. And now he's on the road. Yeah. It's going to be face a really, a really difficult him. passing defense. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, I I'm assume you're tempering expectations. Yeah, I'm, I'm fading them both. You're much like Sammy Watkins. Like I have Curtis Samuel on my team. I'm, I'm kind of forced to play him or pick up someone up off of the waiver wire, and those players are on the waiver wire for a reason. It's Curtis Samuel, he can hit a big play, 14.8. That's his average depth of target. So he's getting those air yards. He's got the same air yards as Chris Godwin. So I he's he's desperation, but I'm fading both of them. Has so Christian McCaffrey facing the 49ers. 49ers have yet to allow a top 12 running back performance. Ooh. Something got to give. I think that they will give up a top 12 running back performance. Now, that's not <laughs> as far as a team total, they might not but Christian McCaffrey will be top 12 even in this difficult matchup. The volume just ensures that. The, the, I think the biggest question mark here I, is the wide receivers on both sides. You, you just brought up Curtis Samuel, and we did talk about Emmanuel Sanders a little bit. But where pe people need to know, they've been starting him. Do you start Emmanuel Sanders, and who do you start him over? Who do you start Man. over him when it comes to – I have almost no confidence in starting Emmanuel Sanders yeah, I in do. his debut. Okay, I, would you rather little. start – Emmanuel Sanders or Auden Tate? Well, in that case, I might I might take the <laughs> shot at... Okay, what about the uh, allure of A.J. Brown? New quarterback. I would, would you go A.J. Brown, Brown yeah, over play Emmanuel AJ, Sanders? I'd play AJ Plus Brown. matchup for the Titans. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, Raiders. 
Three and three taking on the Texans. Texans six and a half point home favorites, fifty one and a half point over under. Ooh. Deshaun Watson, you play him. Yep. Agreed. Well, so, sometimes it doesn't have to be hard. Right. Uh like, John like Josh, check this out. Derek Carr. Nope. No. <laughs> Easy. Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson. Sure. Carlos Hyde Carlos Hyde has had an actually it's a pretty good season overall. You have to be impressed with what he has done after he was left for dead by all of us. It's pretty I, rare for I a guy. I look in the mirror and say Carlos Hyde was on what was it, three teams in a calendar year? Four teams? I can't even keep track because he keeps moving all over the place. But he, he's got the confidence of Bill O'Brien, and he's getting work, and he's usually succeeding. Yeah, it's kind of like AP right now. Right. You know, confidence of a coach, hand them the ball enough times, you could do worse. Except he's on a very high-powered offense, so touchdown opportunities are greater. Sure. Josh Jacobs seems like a very scary play here with the injury concerns. But he's been great when he's been on the field. Yes, so he has. I'm not scared to play Josh Jacobs. <clears throat> I'm playing I, him as well. Yeah, I, I don't think that his shoulder injury is going to limit his uh, his production in this game. Interesting. All right. Well, he's been very, very good, and I think he's got a good second half ahead of him if he can stay healthy. Finally getting targets, too. Yeah. Three well, targets each of the last two weeks. Yeah, that team is, is interesting. Oakland... They seem to have flashes of just misery and then yes. greatness throughout a whole game. I mean, it, Waller, obviously, you're putting him out there. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Raiders give up the most 20-plus uh, yard plays. Just Ooh. takes one. It just takes one for Kenny Bills. That's his specialty, 20-yard plays. I like that you guys tried to make my, like, you know, the fact I'm willing to start him in this matchup, the circumstance. Mm. I'm just like... A big lifetime Kenny Stills fan now. I'm finally oh, on board. Yeah, that was that's the funniest part yes. to us. The the part we love the most is the fact that it's like we have been Kenny Stills truthers. Yeah. And you've been such a hater. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're on our side. <laughs> no, I'm not good. on your side. You love him. Not forever. You want to marry him. <laughs> yeah. uh, I Indian am I am on your side this week. Sitting in, in a tree. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. No, it feels good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's that's accurate. Tyrell, you said you'd start him? If he plays, yes, I would start him. All right. I, I Great matchup. Texans 30th against fantasy wide receivers. I will say this. We, we glossed over Derek Carr's uh, just a complete no. But in a two-quarterback league, I think this matchup against the Texans, he, he he's not – I don't see him being a bottom 10 quarterback like he is often. I agree with you. I think he's going to be one of those middle-of-the-line – uh, you know, when you're deciding between do you play uh, as your second wide receiver, Dalton or Derek Carr, I'm, you know, I'm going Carr in this match. Send in the car. Oh! Send in the car. Wow. It's been a while been for a while. that drop. Two quarterback league. That yeah. was that. All right. Browns, Patriots. <laughs> Let's have a good time. Uh, Patriots, 13 point favorites, 46 point over under. Okay, here we go. Baker Mayfield, enjoy yourself. Come Jarvis on, Landry Baker. says we're going to win. Baker, do something. So fan com- fantasy-wise, go ahead, Jay. They're coming off the bye week, so they've got extra time to prepare and research and say, okay, this is where it's not going to matter. Do, do people, when they're, when they're breaking down the film, like, okay, we got to take on the Patriots, do you uh, – is it like a horror movie where they're watching and they're just right. – People are tense, real nervous, and then you, you see the big play by the DST, and everyone goes, ah! Yeah, I think that's what happened. <laughs> They've got the... It, you look like the lady in Game of Thrones who just saw her her boyfriend get his head okay, smashed. Okay, here's the thing I want to bring up the most in this game, because nobody's going to start Baker in this matchup. That's outlandish. I mean, even if he has a good game, the, the process says there's no way. You know, I would start Derek Carr over Baker I without a, sh- a shadow of a doubt. But listen to this. This, these are the positional ranks, okay? 42, 3, 46, 68, 61, 16. And now you play against New England. Now I'm talking about Odell Beckham Jr., a guy who has only two good weeks on the season, now going up against either the most difficult or the second most difficult matchup for wide receivers where they take away your number one option. Yeah, I mean, the majority opinion out there right now, or at least mine, is that uh, Stephon Gilmore is probably the best corner in football. Yes. And 
between that, the scheme, being at home, look, Beckham can always be fine for you with one Beckham play. And I will but say, banking now, you don't get the base, the baseline with the upside. You get super low floor or miracle play. So Juju put scary. Up, Juju, like as far as actual top talent at the wide receiver position that the Patriots have faced in their ridiculous schedule that has been set forth. Juju came through with six for seventy-eight. Uh, Terry McLaurin had over fifty yards, and besides that, then it's Miami, the Jets without uh, one time without Sam Darnold. I mean, they, they haven't faced. Yeah, but they're facing the Browns and Baker. I'm saying without the New England Patriots, I'm Odell has been terrible. I'm factoring, but wide receiver talent, Odell Beckham can get it done. I I totally see where you're saying that. It, it, you should not be cons- worried or afraid to bench Odell Beckham if you have a solid option this week. Uh, okay, so here's here's he's not op- a must bench for me. Here's the option. Would you start Odell Beckham against New England or Marvin Jones against the New York Giants? Wow. I mean that you know what I mean? Like that that's Yeah, probability wise it's more likely for Marvin Jones to have a bigger game. Emotional wise, not many people want to lose with Odell on the bench. Correct. But so, that doesn't make it the right decision. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm scared to play Odell in this matchup against Gilmore where I expect Baker Mayfield to have a healthy diet of grass. Yeah. He's going to eat a lot of dirt. <laughs> he probably will. Sony Michelle, three touchdowns last week. James White, who eh, – James White feels like the invisible fantasy point scorer in, in the league. He just kind of does it. Leads the running backs and targets per game. Yeah, he, he gets, gets a, a handoff here, handoff there. He's such a good like. If you're in a double flex league, or so, he's just so rock steady. Is that yeah. a phrase? It rock is. Yeah. Oh, I did it. It's also a, a, one of the best bad guys of all time. But yes, yeah. yeah. that's true. Um, it, it, you know, I I love having James White in there just for consi- You're never gonna end up just with a fart of a week. That's true. But he has. He's only got one explosive game. Yeah, but that's season. not what you're looking for from him. Well, this fart and explosive talk is really <laughs> oh, the tummy's tummy's not feeling good. <laughs> Grumbling. Um, Julian Edelman, okay, you're yep. going to play him. Anyone yep. outside of Edelman that you have any pass-catching confidence in? Mohamed uh, Sanu will probably be slowly eased into this rotation. Because of that, I'm still will, willing to put Dorsett in. He had the touchdown. He had the big play. He's out on the field a whole bunch. The Browns' defensive backs have been universally – catastrophically injured this year they lost four dbs uh at one point they were playing with like third stringers they are getting much more healthy I don't know everybody who's back but I do expect the Browns defense to be significantly better after the bye than it was before the bye so I think the the you know the Philip Dorsett's I'm I'm less optimistic of of playing them this week all right I must be out of practice. We're going to have a longer show today, guys. Packers, Chiefs. Chiefs are 5-2 and two right now. Packers are three-and-a-half-point road favorites against this Matt Moore-led offense. And Vegas is still giving the Chiefs an implied team total of nearly 22 points, even with Matt Moore. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we all know that Matt Moore can make a play. It's just kind of how much trouble does he get himself into potentially how much how many risks you know they don't have Kareem Hunt to kind of lean on right as this anchor back they have to lean on Shady and Damian Williams and they're not going to be as effective as running backs Andy Reid has had in the past so Matt Moore will have to try to do something and I think I'm just scared of whether he will do something right that I think that's where Mike is giving yeah, people confidence. I'm in, into Shady this week. In LaShawn McCoy. They're going to need him. That's been a place where the Packers have been able to beat. You know, they, they've been beat on the ground this year um, repeatedly. So Shady last week, 43% of snaps compared to 28% for Damian Williams. 14 touches compared to 10. So Shady should be a decent option here. Uh, by the way, breaking news, O.J. Howard is out. Oh, officially out. Um, Cameron Brait. Look, I get it. He's got a low floor, but every single tight end out there has a low floor. You want touchdown upside since 2016. So the last four seasons, there are only three tight ends that have more touchdowns than Cameron Brait. 
And those are Jimmy Graham, uh, Kelsey, and someone else. I, I'm, I'm doing this off the top of my head. I just looked this up this morning. But there were three. <laughs> I I thought, oh, it's Ebron. It's Ebron. Oh, okay. you remembered it? Yeah. That was good. I, I, I could yeah, see you searching. Then you got to number two. I'm like, oh, he's on a roll. He's got it. Yeah. And then I lost it, um, but I, I, but I got no, it no, back. No. I mean, that's Completed the, the catch. It's no reception. Edits. No edits. Yeah. Up, Ebron. up on further review, we saw it. All right. the, the call on the field was uh, incomplete, though. Right. But then it got, re- it got reversed. <laughs> All right. Tough decisions in this game. Wide receiver-wise for uh, the Packers, yeah. what are you doing there? I feel like what you're doing is playing Russian roulette. Yes, MVS had a major game last week. It looked great. He had three targets. And and his big, long touchdown should have been a 10-yard reception, but it was a missed tackle. He obviously has the talent to do it. He's got the speed, the size, the ability to break a tackle. I'm not taking anything away from him. But what I am saying is you're playing Russian roulette. There are too many, you know, Alan Lazar, Jake Kumro, Ger- Geronimo Allison, MVS, the only one, the only pass catcher that I'm confident starting, assuming Devontae Adams is out, would be Jimmy Graham because he's at the position where you kind of have to, you know, grab he's, someone He's with always a got targets. a chance of at a t- uh, touchdown. The reports are coming in. Devontae Adams did participate in individual drills for the first time since week four. He was helmetless, running some half-speed routes. That, that looks like he's on track for next week. Okay. That's that's how I, I interpret that. All right. Um, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams. Last last week, Jamal Williams, 40% of snaps. Are you playing both of these guys? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very similar to the Broncos. This is a timeshare where I'm okay playing both guys. Aaron Jones has been sensational, especially when he's been given the full opportunity. But Aaron Jones, touchdown, uh, like, the Chiefs are 24th against fantasy running backs. High probability of getting a goal line carry or two from Aaron Jones. So I play him with full confidence, and I, I flex Jamal Williams in. He's getting enough work. We all done with Damian Williams? Yep. I think so. I I, I mean, you got to roster him. You're not dropping him, but I don't think you're playing what, him. What about all that talent, Jay? All that talent going to waste? I, I am so vindicated right now on my yes. Mitchell Trubisky and Damian Williams talentless comments of last year that looked stupid for like a very small stretch of time take that you guys <laughs> stick it to them all right monday night football Dolphins, steelers steelers are 14 point favorites I, I i like the steelers defense a lot this week at home yep against miami yeah the steelers Maybe. defense has been great not that you play anybody above the patriots but they're in that upper echelon this week the steelers defense they have a implied point total of 28.5 points at home against the Dolphins. Mason Rudolph back. James, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatricking. Yeah, James Conner is a must start. He's going to be excellent off the bye. He appears to be healthy. Even if Jalen Samuels is out there, there's, you know, James Conner is a must start. I think Juju Smith Schuster is a must start. This is a matchup where, um, you know, he, he can easily break a long touchdown in this matchup. Outside of that, even though you've got a high implied team total, I don't know if you want to trust a Deontay Johnson. Not, it, it, not would really. you go with anyone else? Vance McDonald? <sighs> yeah. Probably it, not. There's just not a lot of confidence in those other pass catchers. Do you think Juju gets it going this year at all? No, I don't think he gets it going as far as um, becoming a dominant fantasy force. I think that's the only – if he doesn't become a dominant fantasy force, we're never going to say he gets it going. But I think he's going to be a consistent uh, higher-end wide receiver too, which is a huge disappointment, but a, a guy that you play week in and week out. All right, uh, Preston Williams, Devontae Parker. You guys have talked about Parker three three straight games with a touchdown. Man, the, the Steelers, though, the way that their defense is playing – it's Coming not, off the bye, at it's, home, must win, blah, it's, blah, blah. It's in the realm of possibilities, though. I mean, That you would start him? Would yeah. you start yeah, Devontae Parker over Odell? No way. Right? No, no, I'm, no it's, I'm not going that far. I'm just saying, like, look at this game from last night. Washington against Minnesota. And Minnesota's defense have been just annihilating people, and Washington had no chance. In the game, they only lost by 10 points. And there was not really a lot of fantasy – action to go around but the quarterback went down at the halfway mark i'm just saying that these matchups on paper look horrifically bad 
but the the wide receivers for Miami, they've been putting up points. Yeah. Maybe they're maybe they're stinky, stinky garbage points, but they still count. Well, I mean, look, Devontae Parker last week was the wide receiver sixteen, and that was against the Buffalo Bills. That was a right. I mean, who's that, that's who's my point. better yeah. against wide receivers, Buffalo or the Steelers? Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I I think you could do worse than Devontae Parker, but it <laughs> your, is a, your it response is did not have very much confidence. Buffalo. Buffalo. What? Uh, sure, why not? I'll, go, I'll take uh, Buffalo. <laughs> Is that how you order like your oh, wings? No. Yes. Uh, what, what kind? What flavor? What flavor wings would you like, uh, sir? Medium. <laughs> That's. I, it would no. You just say Buffalo. Oh, that was oh. the joke, Jason. <laughs> oh, uh, Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how New England talks when they <laughs> someone says Buffalo is competing with you in the division to win the division crown. Buffalo? Buffalo? Practice. Uh, <laughs> anything else from this game you guys want to touch on? Uh, no, just keep your eye on Mark Walton. He's been getting work and looking okay. So it, he's an okay player to put getting on your bench. work and looking okay. <laughs> Mark Walton. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's me. Yeah. Mark Walton. I'm kind of looking okay. Huh. <laughs> Say hi to your mother for me. Ballers on a Budget. Presented by FanDuel. Buffalo. All right. Who's your Ballers on a Budget? DFS bargain pick for the week. So I, you know, one of the one of the tips and tricks is to find uh, players who have not been adjusted based on moves, based on injuries or things like that. To me, that's Calvin Ridley. I think I love it. I, I think that uh, Matt Ryan is going to play this week. Obviously, if Matt Ryan does not play, then pivot. But uh, assuming Matt Ryan is playing, Mohamed Sanu is not. Uh, Calvin Ridley has been on the field for like he's been in the 60s of snap percentage. That's going to shoot up to at least the 80s. He's a fantastic talent. The matchup against Seattle is great. He's only $5,400 at the wide receiver position, which is where I like to get the cheap guys so I can pay up for a Christian McCaffrey. Uh, that's my baller on a budget for we all, FanDuel. We all pick $5,400. Oh, man. We need a budget pick. Extra, you get an extra 100 You get an extra 100 You get it. But, but we're trying to save 100 I know, but 55 Yeah, well, we're fools. Yeah. All right, Mike, who do you got? I, by the way, I just saw it and I like it. Oh, very nice. I I really like the Calvin Ridley. I like all three of these guys. <clears throat> I'm going with J.D. McKissick, running back. Smooches, running back for the Detroit Lions. He's only $5,400. And, yes, we're all excited for, for Ty Johnson. We I was in on trying to get him, throwing a bunch of fab at him, but I didn't really get him anywhere. But the fact is we don't know what the real split will be. Once they have time to game plan, okay, now we, we know it's Ty Johnson and J.D. McKissick. This – Last week, they were thrown in a position where Carrion Johnson was their guy, but then got hurt. Okay, Ty Johnson, you just go take over for now. McKissick could be involved more than we're planning for. He gets the Giants. The Giants have allowed over 30 fantasy points to the running back position for three straight weeks. The matchup is delicious. I like Ty Johnson, but just saying 5,400 for the, the pass catcher, very interesting. Well, I, Ty Johnson's cheap, too. Yeah, that's what I was sure. And, and I, I would have made Ty Johnson my pick, but I, he's going to be very, very high ownership. Yes, he will. It's it's a nice pivot for, for the ownership. McKissick play. feels to me like going the Kumaro versus Lazard, Lazard direction, and it paid off. You know, if right. you went Kumaro, the lower ownership percentage still at a bargain. I think you're right. I mean, they haven't been able to run the ball super so, well regardless, so it, the passing game could be involved here. So – I like J.D. McKissick at 5,400 in general, and I totally get the, the pivoting off the chalk, but Ty Johnson is 5,200 hmm. and is probably the guy that's going to have the bigger game, so he's my baller <laughs> on a budget. He's at 5,200? <laughs> I believe so, yes. Yeah. That's I mean, I, I, it, that's, that's where it's really difficult Yeah, because I can't imagine not playing Ty Johnson at 5,200. Over McKissick. Yeah. Over McKissick. Devin Singletary, I'm going to go with him, 5,400. Second week back, could get more involvement in the passing game. His snap counts have gone up in all the games that he's progressively been able to play. I think he's one of the lowest-cost running backs that has actual electric upside. When he touches the ball, it can be a house call, and then it can pay off for you at the 5,400. So I think Devin Singletary, I realize that 
Look, the Eagles have been really good against the run, but Singletary does a little bit more on the outside edges, the areas where they're not as strong, those tackling corners, and he can get involved in the passing game. Don't miss your chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip to hang out with us. Yeah! The Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. That's why we do this Ballers on a Budget. You can go enter each week. It's a new tournament every week. Go to FanDuel.com slash Ballers. Mm. Ballers. Ballers. <laughs> ballers. Buffalo. I know. I was about to hit it. I just I wanted to vet. I just uh -huh. just I wanted to vet to make sure that the, Ty the, Johnson was actually fifty two hundred because uh, yeah. I felt like that was wrong. Yeah, he is correct. He yeah. Is, so, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, this is one of those like Hunter Henry last week where the the price they, they, they set yet. the price and then they don't alter it. Well, I, I don't think I'd be I'd mind mixing a little bit, you know, because of the ownership of Ty Johnson being so high, having a few lineups with J.D. McKissick at a similar price. Sure. Just to kind of be... You uh, know one of those two guys is going to have a great game. Yeah, yeah that's, I think that's fair. Matthew Stafford's playing so well right now. Yes. And they just can't win. All right, we want to thank today's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Keenan Allen signed jersey. Holy moly. What? That's, this is insane. That's not fair. The guy missed one practice, and this is 30, happening. $33.93 yesterday I've, at pristineauction.com. That is... That is a signed Beckett certified jersey, Los Angeles Chargers, $33.93. Congratulations. Yeah, you want to get a cool gift this oh, upcoming that's awesome. holidays? Whew, you know, that's we amazing. gave, I believe, a very cool signed Keenan Allen jersey to a friend of ours. We did. We sure from did. Pristine we did. That's right. It was the uh, powder blue. Oh. It was delightful. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to keep it. <laughs> I wanted to keep it too, but. But here we are yeah. being nice friends. Oh, yeah. we're so giving. <laughs> All right, that is it for today's show. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back Absolutely. Sunday live. Yeah, a whole be lot there. more. I'll be there an hour before. Brooks will game be back time. next week, too. Woo! Goodbye. Buffalo. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Remember, Foot Clan, Simply Safe makes home security easy with no contract, hidden fees, or fine print for just 15 bucks a month. You get 24-7 professional monitoring throughout your home. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers and you'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Simplysafe.com slash footballers.